Pam, would you please start us off with prayer? I really like those songs. I know the songs are good. Aren't they good? Okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to hear your word today. Please send your Holy Spirit on Pastor Paul so that he may speak your words of love, forgiveness, and life. Send your Spirit also on us who hear that we, more, we may more fully comprehend your love for us expressed in the death and resurrection of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right. Last week our message title was Say What? And uh, we talked about how God made our mouths uh, and what comes from our mouths is from an abundance of our heart. And if our hearts are evil, then what comes out of our mouths is evil. And if our hearts are filled with the Spirit, then, then what should come out of our mouths, that abundance, should be good. God gave us our mouths to use, to use for being a blessing rather than a curse, and to declare His praise above all things. Our task for the week last week was, let your mouth be a blessing. And the question for the week, what comes from your heart, or what comes from your heart and mouth? Is the abundance of your heart good, or is it evil? Is it filled with the ugly, or is it filled with the spirit? Did anyone have any thoughts or comments on that over the last week? Pam, go ahead. The words we use are very important, absolutely. Yes, we are all guilty of failing with our words sometimes, right? We need to guard our hearts and ask God to guard our hearts for us, right? That was the psalm that we, we used last week. Guard my heart, Lord. Yeah. Yes, our heart draws us closer to God. He fills our hearts. Yes, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Then our message title for today is Less is More. And today we are going to talk about humility. Uh, and I, I wonder if I, uh, how humble are you? And, and that's a, a dangerous question. That's a difficult question to answer because as soon as you say, yeah, I'm pretty humble. You've blown it, right? <laughs> and you're not as humble as you may think you are. William Law stated, there can be no surer proof of a confirmed pride than a belief that one is sufficiently humble. It is important for us to understand what humility is if we are going to recognize if we are truly humble. So I think to start off uh, understanding what humility is, we need to start off talking about what pride is, the opposite of humility. Pride throughout history has been seen as one of the greatest vices. Luther and a lot of other uh, good, positive theologians, the reformers, they all condemned pride. Pride is at the heart of almost everything. Pride is what Satan, what happened to Satan that, that he fell from heaven. It was pride that he, that he wanted to be like God. And what he used for Adam and Eve to tempt them just to be like God. That is a, a, an attack at their pride. Pride is dangerous. Today, we celebrate pride. In fact, it's probably quite appropriate that, that Pride Month is a month where we celebrate going against God's law. Pride is dangerous again and again. We, we are blinded to, our, to it in ourselves, but it's so easy to see in others. In our leaders, in, our, in those people around us, pride is very easy to see. But we don't want to hear that we are 
prideful. C.S. Lewis, and you may have heard this, uh, this quote before, humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. It's not putting yourself down or beating yourself up. It's lifting others up, considering others more than you consider yourself. I found this quote, and I'm not sure who said it, but true humility keeps us from thinking too highly or too meanly of ourselves. Not overly inflated and, and not looking too low. Pride is exalting ourselves, and humility is not putting ourselves to, thinking of ourselves too lowly, but humility is thinking with a reality view of who we are. Paul writes with that in, end in mind in Romans chapter 12. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. From a faith perspective, humility is understanding who we are who we are in God's presence, and who we are compared to others. Humility is what God was seeking from his people when Solomon dedicated the temple in 2 Chronicles 7. If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Recognize that, that sin comes from pride, but humility brings forgiveness. When we humble ourselves before God, recognizing that we are sinners. I mentioned last week that every worship service that we do has to have a time of confession and forgiveness. We've got to humble ourselves before God and recognize that, that we are sinners, but we've also got to remember that not only are we sinners, we are forgiven sinners. Both are critical. We need that realistic understanding. I'm a sinner, but I'm a forgiven sinner. Now, let's talk about the word humble for just a moment. The word humble comes from the Greek or not the Greek, the Latin word humilis, okay? Humble from humilis. And in fact, humilis is where we get our word for human. Humil humilis means dirt or ground. Human is a ground creature. When, when Adam uh, was created, he was created from the ground. Humble or uh, humilis is also where we get our word for hummus, but that just tastes like dirt. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a completely different word, and I do like hummus. Uh, but, but we need to recognize what humility actually is. It's a real understanding of what, what stance we have before God. Now, when Jesus was talking with the disciples in our gospel, they were, they were arguing about who was the greatest, and Jesus warned them against pride and encouraged them to strive for humility in Mark chapter 9. And he sat down and called the 12. And he said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. We've got to serve others. That's the idea of being humble, to put them above ourselves, even when they don't deserve it, and especially when they don't deserve it. That is humility. Jesus told them this, and then he, then he actually did a children's message with them. And, and in fact, he grabbed a child and put him on his lap. And he, in verse 36, he took a child and put him in the midst of them, and taking them in his arms, he said to them, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me, receives not me, but him who sent me. Humility is receiving the lowest. 
those that we would otherwise not associate with or, or we would turn our eyes or our back on when the children of Israel were about to enter the promised land and Moses' last words to the children of Israel, he talked about humility in Deuteronomy chapter 8. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing, to know what was in, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Our mouths happen to flow from what is in our heart, the abundance of what's in our heart. But, but not only does what comes out of our heart, but what is in our actions flows from the abundance of our heart. Our pride or our humility comes from what is in our heart. God humbled them to know what was in their heart. Jesus, in Matthew 23, says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Now listen to you. I want to make sure you caught your two options there. You can be humble and God will exalt you. Or you can exalt yourself and be humbled. That's not a real hard choice. Exalting yourself and being humbled by God is like painting a target on your back and say, shoot away, God. Because God will humble you if you need to be. Now, in addition to God desiring our humility, he also asks us to come before him in a humble way. In our first reading in James chapter 4, submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Notice here that, that, that James is putting submitting, being humble, and he's connecting it with resisting the devil. When we humble ourselves, we are empowered to resist the devil. They go hand in hand. Now, we're going to go on to James uh, verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 8. And uh, Sharon, I just want to remind you, I want you to uh, hold on to one verse here momentarily. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Now, I don't want to take too much issue with James here, but if I had written that, I would have said, cleanse your heart, or hands, you stinking sinners. But, but God chose uh, James to write that rather than Paul. Uh, so we'll, we'll just continue. But uh, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Double -minded. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. When we humble ourselves, he exalts us. And he does that through his son. He doesn't lift us up so that everybody looks at us. He lifts us up so that he, we can be in his presence. The writer of Psalm 147 says, The Lord lifts up the humble. He casts the wicked to the ground. Humble yourself and be exalted or be prideful and wicked and be humbled and cast to the ground. Not much of a choice. We look at, at Jesus and, and his, um, his model for us, his example for us. That song was great. A little more like Jesus and a little less like me. But Jesus began with his entry into Jerusalem prophesied in Zechariah 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a coal, the foal of a donkey. Jesus came riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. He came to serve, not to be served. He came to wash his disciples' feet. He came to be humbled on a cross for you and for me. It is 
through Christ's humility that we are lifted up. It is through his humble service for us that we are exalted. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 2, have this in mind, have this mind among yourselves, which is in yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Jesus humbled himself to die for you and for me. We don't deserve it. But his greatest act of humility was dying for us so that we could be forgiven, so that we could live with him in eternity. This is the connection that Jesus was attempting to make with his disciples when they were arguing about who was the greatest. Just before they were arguing about who was the greatest, Jesus said to them in, in uh, verse 31 of our gospel, he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men, and they, were, they will kill him. And when he is killed, after three days, he will rise again. The disciples weren't understanding what Jesus was trying to tell them, that he needed to die. They thought, well, Jesus is going to be great, so we're going to be great too. Humility is not what everyone's looking for. It is difficult, and, and not many of us pursue it because it can be difficult. It can be hard. We don't like being humbled. But it has been said that humility is one of the most essential characteristics of the Christian faith. Jesus was humble. We are to be humble like him. Coming back to James chapter 4, verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. God is the creator he is limitless. He is holy. He is good and all things wonderful. And we are not. We are the created. We are sinful. We are completely limited. But God still loves us. God desires us to be with him for all eternity. There are no shortcuts to working on your humility. It is difficult. It is sometimes painful. But I would encourage you to strive for humility. And if you have the courage, I would encourage you to pray for humility. But just be careful. Careful what you pray for because you just might get what you ask for. All right. Comments, questions, thoughts? It may not be what the way you thought, yes. The only one who can assess our humility is, is Christ. Yeah, right. As soon as I start assessing my humility, it's, yeah, we fail. Yes. We are created, not the creator. We are the forgiven, not the forgiver. Thanks. Anyone else? Okay, then here's your task and question for the week. Humble yourself and pray for humility. Have the courage to pray for it. And the question for the week, would you rather be humbled? The task was humble yourself. The question is, would you rather be humbled? Let's pray. Barb, would you wrap us up? Heavenly Father, we thank you for being near us 
in this time. We ask that you would move in our hearts through the message that we have just heard. Fill us with your Holy Spirit that we might have the courage to be doers of your word and not hearers only. May we always be humble and kind. May we be faithful witnesses of the love you have shown us in Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ma'am. All right. And Jerry.